Today on the Grandland Video Blog, Superman. Project Superpowers. My name is Bruce. Mirror's Edge. And Spawn. Hey everyone, welcome to the Grandland Video Blog, books that came out on October 29th, 2008. My name is Craig, as usual. In this installment, we're going to talk about some DC books and some indie books. And we're going to have mustard packets thrown back and forth. <laughs> First up, Mirror's Edge number one. You slacker. Mirror's Edge number one from Wildstorm Comics. This is about the upcoming video game. My, my viewers are just going to be so disappointed. For that. I apologize to all of you. No, he doesn't. Brad's a mess. Just a mess. He came in here, he was snorting lines of coke. It was terrible. So, this is number one in the, uh, I'm assuming, is a mini series about the new Mirror's Edge video game that's coming out. Uh, I believe today, actually, if you're watching this on October 30th, which is when we tape it, you can download it now in the PlayStation. Quit breaking down place. the walls, man. I know, just fourth wall is gone. Or on October 31st, Halloween Day, you can download the demo in Xbox Live Marketplace. So check out the demo. It's a very interesting game. The idea is that it's a first person game, but it's kind of like, instead of a shooter, it's more of a parkour. You know, the running through the buildings, jumping off of rooftops sort of thing. The, I know it's like some sport or some artistic thing going on. So anyways, this book features the main character, Faith, and it talks about <coughs> beginning to be one of these characters. She's the main character in the video game as well. Wildstorm has a really good uh, track record of doing good adaptations of video games into comic books. For example, the Gears of War comic that just came out recently. Also very well done. So keep this in mind. It's definitely a good story if you're looking forward to the video game. This is a good tie-in if you want to get a little more backstory. Otherwise, if you're just looking for an interesting new comic that's kind of off the wall, kind of something that you haven't seen before, check this out. It's good stuff. Next up, my name is Bruce. No, it's not. You're right. It's not. I failed you. Dun, dun, dun. My name is Bruce. It's a one-shot from Dark Horse Comics. Coincides with the Bruce Campbell uh, movie of the same name, where he fights Yuan T or whatever this guy's name is, Guan G or something like that. Dan the funny Didio. Thing is, <laughs> yes, he fights Dan Didio. That would be much more funny. Uh, the funny thing is, a bunch of people kidnap Bruce Campbell and think that he's Ash, and they're like, "Save us, Ash!" And he's really like, "Dude, I'm Bruce Campbell." He's playing himself in the movie. Supposedly, this is a direct adaptation of the movie. If this is all the movie is, this is really lame. They're going to have to pad it out a lot. It better be really funny. There better be a lot more scenes and a lot more situations going on because what's in this book is not going to sustain an entire 90-minute movie, let alone you know Hollywood's latest three-hour epics, which if Bruce Campbell made a three-hour epic of him playing himself, I, I don't know. I wouldn't know whether to laugh or cry. But I do love Bruce Campbell, all jokes aside. But... This is a good kind of overview of what the movie is supposedly about, but I don't know if it's necessarily the full scope of the movie. I certainly hope it's not, because if it is, the movie is lacking. Otherwise, it's not a bad one-shot story. It's got some funny, weird quirks in it that I didn't necessarily like. The ghost's narration is kind of weird. But overall, it's a cute little story. It stars Bruce Campbell. I'm a fan of that, so it's, it's kind of well done. It's about in the middle of the road. Next up, Project Superpowers. As you may have known, wrapped up this week, and because Dynamite's making tons of money on this, or at least more than they usually do, uh, Alex Ross is launching Chapter 2, a Black Terror miniseries and a Devil miniseries. If you want the down low on the Black Terror or the Devil miniseries, as my brothers say, first three pages of Black Terror and the first three pages of the Devil are both in here. There's a very long and arduous sketchbook situation in here where you just get to look at cute little Alex Ross drawings. And if you like Alex Ross drawings, that's good. Hey, you, you just gonna eat some popcorn and like when there's a bag rustle in the back? Uh huh? Jeez. Sloppy. This is all first rate, I tell ya. Try to get some stools and class up the joint and somebody starts eating popcorn while they're shooting this. So anyways, for just a dollar, you can check out this book. It's a lot of sketchbook. I don't think it necessarily should have been a dollar. I think it should have been maybe like a 50 cent preview or even a free, a free preview. But... Free with decent. Wizard, what? What? I've seen that before. Free what? Free with Wizard. Yeah, this would. Have been Alex a great Ross free. has never done that before. This would be a great Free with Wizard book, actually. So, unfortunately, it's not. But 
it's all right for a dollar if you're a big Project Superheroes fan. It's a nice little, you know, uh, something to look forward to the next couple miniseries. Next up, Spawn 185. If you haven't heard, you've been living under a rock, I'm sure. Todd or don't McFarlane. read comics. Todd, yeah, or you don't read comics and you don't care. In which case, what are you doing here? Spawn 185. Todd McFarlane returns for the first time since quite possibly issue one. <laughs> Wells Portacio and Brian Holguin are involved. Is it Portacio's Ooh? writing and Holguin's drawing? No, like all the that. way around. Oh, yeah. Portacio's drawing, Holguin's writing. McFarlane's co-writing and co-drawing, helping both of them, so you don't know where it starts and ends. If you've ever read Spawn number one from so many years ago, 17 years ago, whatever it was, I own copies still. And it's, it's crap, and I read it, and I didn't understand it, but I was like, wow, this is crazy. This is pretty much a new jumping on point. It's crazy. Who knows what's going on? The game has changed. You get a little violator, you get a little violator clown, violator demon. You get somebody who kind of looks like Al Simmons blowing his head off and opening a gate to hell or something like that. I think that's what happened. I'm not quite sure. It's definitely a new approach for the Spawn franchise, which is probably going to benefit them because for a while Spawn's just been this mocked character that's kind of in the corner. There's no story about him. There's no, you know, compelling. You can't be like, well, Spawn's Armageddon saga was a really good trade paperback. No, Spawn's just a cool looking character that never has anything interesting happen to him for 184 issues. Plus tie in issues, plus medieval issues, plus miniseries, and all that. Spin offs. Yeah, Sam and Twitch is probably the best thing the Spawn franchise gave us, which is Brian Michael Bendis writing crime. So this is an interesting new direction. Hopefully, it'll revitalize the franchise. Uh, as far as story goes, it's all right. It's interesting. I don't know if I'd necessarily buy it every month, but I'm interested to see where it goes. And it's promising. There's a lot of potential here. Hopefully, they'll pay it off. Probably not. Probably not. Last up for the week, Superman number 681. I think. 681, Brad? Yes. Sweet. You can't tell that we did this twice. No. Nope. Uh, Green Triangle number two, as we call it also. This is part two of the new Krypton story. James Robinson is writing this in uh, cahoots with Jeff Johns, as Jeff Johns is in charge of the Superman entire, you know, group. Now. Jim Robinson is now writing Superman, Jeff Johns is on action, and Jamal Eigel is on Supergirl. The new Krypton story is very interesting. 100,000 Kryptonians living in Kandor, the former bottle city, now up by the Antarctic. What does Superman do when he's one of 100,000 Supermen all on Earth, and with 100,000 of them not knowing how Earth operates? fully grown with a full society and a full city, how do they adapt? And they're not being shy about it. They're flying all over the world. This is a fascinating concept. And as we were talking previously, it's kind of like what Ed Brubaker did with Captain America. He took Captain America and he said, what do we not do? We don't kill Steve Rogers and we don't bring back Bucky. Well, how about we bring back Bucky and then we kill Steve Rogers? Superman is the last son of Krypton. Well, if you take that away from him, what character does he become? It's an interesting character development and it's rapidly becoming one of the most fascinating books I read, at least from DC Comics, every month. And you have a very nice three month long tie-in that's going to go into some very, very good things. And you get a cute little Altross cover if you like that sort of thing. Of course, you're probably buying Project Superpowers anyway. So, anyways, ultimately this is a very good book and it's a very good start for a character that should not be middling in mediocrity. This is a really good character and somebody's finally doing something good with him. So, really well done. Again, James Robinson. And Jeff Johns, both. And I'm sorry, you have something to say, pros? Yes. This has been the Grand Land Video Blog, and do not, I repeat, do not keep that on the download.